Great to have with us once again Jim and Jesse McReynolds and the Virginia boys. And uh, Frank, back at the House of Cash again in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Yes, and it's uh, good to be back and good to see Jim and Jesse after uh, traveling how many miles uh, did you did you do, fellas? Well, I don't know if we really kept up with the miles. We, uh, I know when we left uh, Lausanne, I guess that's the way you'd say it, Switzerland, it You're took right. about 30-some hours to uh, get back to Tennessee. And we were... Just a little bit tired when we got here. <laughs> I, I, I can believe that. And uh, I guess while you were uh, there, they gave you a couple of train rides, too, didn't they? Yeah, we rode trains quite a bit. <laughs> so you were suffering from train lag rather than jet lag. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. <laughs> I guess that's the only way to uh, to travel to some of the places uh, in some of that part of the country. Uh, you, uh, I guess you saw the Alps. Well, we rode all the way. I think we rode around four or five town or times around the Alps. And, we, uh, of course, we were in... Uh, Zurich, Switzerland, and uh, we worked uh, Lausanne and uh, Bern, and uh, we were just about everywhere but in the Alps, and uh, we didn't really get up in the uh, in the mountains there. Uh, it, uh, I guess, in fact, they, uh, you just uh, got away before there was uh, a strike and the trains would have stopped and you'd have been there yet? Yes, we <laughs> had planned to leave uh, a couple of days later, and uh, somebody said, you, it's a good thing you're leaving on Sunday, said on Monday they're going to have a train strike, so we'd probably <laughs> still been over there. <laughs> Well, you could have been skiing instead of uh, picking at the House of Cash, but uh, we're glad you're here, and uh, why don't we just uh, kind of ramble right on and do another one of those great songs of yours? Well, we'd like to go back and get one we did a few years ago called Stormy Horizons. <laughs> Like the road. 
Stormy Horizons, a great song there. And uh, I remember when that originally came out, I had a 45 of that. I still have it. We've, in fact, uh, I think played it on this uh, on the Country Road show, 45 that came out around 1962, I guess, if I remember rightly. Vic, sure? I believe it, uh, somewhere around there. I don't remember the exact time, but we have, uh, and that was for the epic people. It at was, that time, yeah. And we have just recently uh, recorded that. And it's in a new album that we have. It's just, just been released. Great. I'll be looking forward to getting a hold of a, a copy of the album and uh, start playing a new version of, of that one as well. You were I, going to say something? Well, no, I was just going to uh, find out if we could uh, meet the rest of the uh, group here. Fellas? I think that's a wise move. <laughs> Somebody, one of them's <laughs> clapping his hands already. <laughs> you can tell, always tell the hands in the group, can't you? Yeah. Well, we'll introduce our banjo player for it first, uh, since he's the one that... Uh, just clap his hands for <laughs> the last. This is a gentleman who's uh, worked with the uh, Jim and Jesse show for quite a few years, and he's been around Nashville playing a lot of record sessions recently. We're glad to get him to come in and have us do the radio shows. The name is Vic Jordan. Yeah, I, uh, I see Vic's name on an awful lot of albums as a banjo player, and uh, in fact, I've uh, broken about three fingers trying to get some of them licked. Too. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were going to say you broke about three albums. Uh. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I, I'm about ready to break the albums by the time I find out, find out that I can't uh, get some of those uh, banjo licks that Vic puts in them. Then we have uh, Joe Meadows on the fiddle. Joe's been working with us a long time, and on the bass over here is uh, Keith McReynolds. He's part of my family. Yeah, I was going to say that name sounded familiar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, why don't we uh, then put everybody together and do an instrumental tune now that we found out who we've got with us? Okay, if Vic will, will come around and help me out, we'll do one that we wrote a few years ago called the Border Ride. Great. <laughs> telling you <laughs> there was uh, there was all kinds of stuff in there uh, i'll tell you what uh i'm not going to work on that one broken fingers or not <laughs> uh it's uh it's a great tune and i in fact i remember when that one came out we played that record uh, that original record on the program from time to time i'll dedicate that one to dale wood mandolin player from my group uh, meadow green he's throwing his f5 out into a snowbank and everything trying to get some of that cross picking <laughs> and stuff that jesse does there <laughs> But, well, it's uh, not too complicated. We just didn't know what to call it. We didn't know to call it American or Mexicans. We call it border riding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's nice. Well, that's uh, like the Swiss, too. You know, they're always sitting on the fence. So, uh, you know, you could have named it after <laughs> yeah. them. Uh, that reminds me, uh, I know wherever you go, uh, fellas, you get uh, other musicians coming backstage and so on after the show. What about in Switzerland? Uh, any budding uh, bluegrass musicians over there? Oh, yeah. yes, we had quite a few. They was, uh, well, just about everywhere we worked, uh, they was... Uh, a Swiss band. There's there's a lot of interest over in old time music. They've got a lot of folk clubs and uh, most all the dates. And uh, one of the uh, shows we uh, worked on uh, 
in uh, Lausanne was a folk festival, and it's, uh, it was the third or fourth year that they've been having this. So it was, there was a lot of groups there. There was one group from North Carolina, I think, but the rest of the groups on the festival was made up from uh, people from around Switzerland and in that area. So there's big interest uh, there then in uh, country bluegrass music, eh? Yes, yeah. very, very much. Great. There's uh, a big interest in bluegrass music, of course, in Canada, and especially uh, we're beginning to get a lot of mail from out west, and I think that this next song that you're going to do uh, kind of came from uh, in western Canada, I think. Right. This is uh, a song that's been a favorite of ours for a long time. I think the Browns had the yeah. first record on that, and we were in, uh, was it Calgary or Edmonton, Edmonton just Brown. recently and found out that, uh, that the gentleman that wrote this song was from in the area there. Yeah, his name was, I think, Hud Ferris, if right. I'm not mistaken, mm. and uh, he wrote the song. You're not, Vic. <laughs> when have <laughs> you ever been mistaken, Vic? <laughs> <laughs> well, I miss one now and then. I never admit it. First time I've ever admitted well, it. Well, okay, but, uh, fine. Uh, yeah, let's hear uh, I Heard the Bluebirds Sing. I met a girl out in the hills that gave my lonely heart a thrill. Her beauty seemed just like a breath of spring. And when I looked into her eyes, I thought of bluer summer skies. And when I held her hand in mine, I heard the bluebird sing the sang of wandering. Wandering if he loves her, will she marry? We planned on being married in the spring All through the long cold winter months It seemed the spring would never come And every gloomy winter day I heard the bluebirds sing They sang of waiting Waiting for the flowers And of counting Counting every hour To the bluebirds The bird chirps and welcome Into the world once more And while we're That's a great song, and there's an awful mouthful of words in that thing, isn't there? <laughs> More words than I ever thought about it. <laughs> was it Spreath of Bring, you were saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I was hoping you wouldn't bring that no. up. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, uh, you know, there was a, a, an old version of that. I think the first one that was very popular in Canada was done by uh, uh, Hal Lone Pine, Harold Brawl. I don't know if you knew uh, Hal or not. Oh, yes. Uh, well, yeah. he, uh, he used to be in Wheeling. That's he right. Worked he did, at the yeah. Jamboree. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We met him there one time. Yeah. Hal uh, passed away uh, just last year. Yeah. Someone was telling us that uh, not too long ago. We were talking about some of the days when the, we, when Wheeling. I guess we worked there about uh, five or six months or so. And we were talking about some of the acts that had been there, and they were telling us not too long ago that he had passed away. Yes. And uh, he, uh, they recorded. He and his wife at that time, uh, Betty Cody recorded that number and had a pretty big hit of it in, in Canada. And then the Browns, of course, made a big uh, big hit of it. But uh, that's a real fine version there with a kind of a, a bluegrass style. I really like that. Uh, before we uh, let you get away, though, uh, it's been great having you with us uh, again on Country Road. We'd like to ask if you'd uh, do one of those great gospel songs that you like to do. Well, Vic, we'd be uh, glad to pick up one here that's been a favorite of ours for a long time. We have this recorded in one of our albums entitled The River of Jordan. That's uh, one of my favorite gospel songs, and thanks very much again for bringing all the gang in and uh, doing this bit for us on Country Road. Thank you, Vic. We've enjoyed it. Baptist man. 
Sunny Tennessee, along with Jim and Jesse and the Virginia boys, doing some more fine country picking. That's right. You know, Vic, I uh, finally found out why they call it the House of Cash. Is that right? Yeah, I offered Charlie uh, my credit card, and he wouldn't take it. (laughs) 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 Uh, uh, Well, we... uh, The producer wanted me to do that joke, by the way. I was going to say, are we we going to give credit to the the originator of that line? That's right. Jim and Jesse, it's great to have you with us once again. Vic and uh, Frank both, it's uh, it's our pleasure to be back once again. We uh, got a whole lot of good tunes lined up, and uh, so I think we uh, should just get right along with it and get some... Uh, I always get doing so much talking that we don't get enough tunes in when we have you with us, so producer said, uh, don't talk so much, let's have some more picking. So that's what we're going to do tonight, is uh, kind of get as many tunes in here as we can in the time that we have available. And uh, what's going to be the next one? We'll just solve a new one called, Then I'll Stop Going For You.
sometime you'll always be in love of mine until all these pains come true. When the wind stops blowing and the river stops flowing, and I'll stop going for you, for you. I'll stop going for you. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, fellas, uh, last time we had you on the show, uh, we mentioned you just got back from Switzerland. I just wondered uh, if you're going to go back there. Well, we, uh, yes, we have some plans for the, uh, maybe not next year, but a couple years. They, I know we had uh, some people ask us if we would come back to uh, Holland. And uh, also, uh, we worked Paris on this trip, too. And we, we had quite a, a lot of territory that we covered, but uh, we... Uh, we do plan to go back, if not next year, the following year. I guess you don't really have to uh, speak the language because uh, your music is uh, enough language for uh, for the folks there. Well, if we had to speak the language, we'd never make out. <laughs> <laughs> How do you mean that? Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway. Uh, instrumental time here, and uh, maybe we just uh, I, we'll get the same folks with us that we had last time around. Uh, Keith McReynolds on bass and Vic Jordan, of course, playing five string banjo. And, That's uh, Vic number one, by the way. Vic number one. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. Vic number we two we one. just decided that you're Vic number two on the oh, show now. Okay, thanks. Yeah. And uh, Joe Meadows, of course, one of my favorite fiddle players uh, playing the fiddle. Put everybody together and do Stony Creek. All right. <laughs> that's called Stony Creek, and uh, that, that's a great key change in there. I like the way that uh, goes up there for the second uh, second part around. There's a nice uh, nice jump there. I you saw you know how we introduced that. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you watching Vic there too. Did you want to borrow his fingers to take back with you? Uh, I could use them. I'll tell you that. It uh, I don't know. It uh, it looked to me as though he had more than me. If I had the same amount of fingers that he's got, he must have at least three or four extra ones on uh, on each hand there. And, you know, uh, Jesse, picking that mandolin, he does all that with one pick. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's not uh, easy either, if, no. you ha if you haven't already tried it. Uh, it's easy for him. It's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, easy for him. Uh, tell us about this uh, next song. This is a song that uh, we wrote a few years ago, sort of a ballad-type song. Get Keith to help us sing it, one called The Voice of My Darling. Just as long as I stay in this lonesome Baby, speak to me. 
heard the voice of my darling I looked but there was no one else around That's when I knew her memory would haunt me Just as long as I stay in this lonesome one of your own, isn't it? Yes, that's the one we wrote uh, a few years back. Yeah. Uh, we uh, might mention again that we're uh, recording this program for future use. Uh, we're down in uh, Hendersonville, Tennessee, where we've uh, been having just a great week here uh, picking. We've met some friends of yours, I guess, uh, the Pinnacle Boys from over around Knoxville. Oh, yes, they're fine. Some fine pickers. And great boys they are. And uh, also Harold Morrison, who was a pretty good cat himself. Yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah, he's a cat, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's quite a lad. I hope uh, he has nine lives. <laughs> well, he, uh, he's probably gone through most of them already. <laughs> anyway, we're almost uh, ready to, to wrap it up here. Yeah, I started to say that we're uh, uh, with Charlie Bragg and folks at the House of Cash, and we uh, don't want any more uh, bad jokes about that, uh, like nope. uh, credit cards or anything. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> and, My lips are sealed. Uh, all right. And we uh, would like to, of course, uh, include a gospel song, as we usually do, and uh, I think that you've got one of the great old standards for us right now. Vic, we'll do one here called Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. That's great. Yeah. 
Mighty fine. That's what we call in Canada a southern gospel song. I don't know what it's called around here. It's probably called a southern gospel song. That's like <laughs> it. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, a real, uh, it's a real old one anyway. Yeah, they're, they're real old time spirituals, I guess. We also uh, have been known to call them spiritual songs. Uh, you know, we've had uh, Jim and Jesse and boys on the program a lot of times, and uh, I always get this awful urge to pick. Do you? Every time that they're with us, because they just do such a great job that I uh, get all wound up here and. Uh, well, you could always pick your teeth while they're. <laughs> well, that's that's about <laughs> where I fit into this. But nevertheless, I just happened to know that uh, that Jesse laid a fiddle down back over there in the corner, and before anybody gets to it first, I'm going to run over there and grab it, and anything can happen. I what I'd like to do, uh, Jim or. Uh, or Jesse, whoever wants to uh, agree to this. <laughs> we will. <laughs> uh, that, oh, you uh, guys are too easy. <laughs> <laughs> that I, I'd like to play one of the old-time Canadian tunes that I uh, try to do on the fiddle and uh, see how it would sound with a, uh, with a bluegrass band backup. Uh, I think it kind of would go together pretty good. seems to sound that way to me just from listening to the boys' pick here. So uh, maybe I'll grab a fiddle here, and uh, we'll get together and do uh, something called uh, The Flowers of Edinburgh, that I know good. you've all heard of. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> okay. And uh, if we, uh, what we'll do is uh, I'll fiddle our way out of here, and uh, Glenn, you can fade to black <laughs> any time <laughs> after I get started. After the first to. two bars would be, uh, <laughs> but, would be okay uh, for me. <laughs> we'll see what happens. We'd like to, uh, to thank you all for being with us again on the program. It's always great to have you along. And I, just Vic, wonder, uh, yeah, I just wonder, too, how many pounds of lobsters it might take to get you to come up to Nova Scotia. Oh, it wouldn't. It wouldn't take many at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll work that. Or would out. you prefer money? <laughs> Either one would be all right. Anyway, it, I want to say too, it's been great uh, being here, uh, fellas, and uh, everybody has made me feel so much at home. This is my first uh, trip to Nashville. Everybody's made me feel so much at home that uh, I feel like coming back next week. As a matter of fact, I might. Well, Frank, if you'd like to, we'll just keep you down here with us in uh, Nashville. Okay, maybe I could get locked up or something for the weekend. I don't know. <laughs> You're working on it. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Okay, anyway, uh, I guess uh, we're all going to try, all except me, that is, Flowers of Edinburgh. ¶¶ 